storyteller. So I was here for Revolution Ego, which was, of course, Jay, Kelly, and Tanisha. And um, theirs was really great. But theirs was the first pioneer art storytelling. So when they first did it, I was like, what is the art storytelling? What are you doing? So um, they told their story of Revolution Ego. And then I missed Davidas. Were y'all here for Davidas? Yes. Yes. Yes, I heard hers was all the way in there. Thorough. So anyway. My name is Jay Addict. Hey Jay! Hi! And I'm a Virgo. Yeah. And if you know anything about Virgos, that means two things. One, I will tell you everything. And two, I will not tell you if you do not ask. So the first thing I'm going to do is hand out a little sheets of paper. We're going to do a call and response, kind of real storytelling thing here tonight. And you can ask me any questions. I did not bring my children so that you can ask me. <laughs> There's also additional music from over there. Oh, okay. It's two sets of music? Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's fine. Indiana put it on. Okay, good. Is that their music? Okay, no, that was. That's their plan now. Well, alright, whatever. So, anyway, um, nothing is off limits. So, I'll start with just kind of basic story because it's really arrogant for me to assume what you might want to know about me. So, I can tell you all about artist stuff, but that might be boring. What you probably really want to know is gritty grime stuff. So, anyway, here's your little <laughs> questions and write it down, pass it along on the pen. I was born in Charlotte, so I'm a Charlottean. And um, I, uh, let's see, I grew up in Hidden Valley. And um, that's right, I'm gangster, don't you? <laughs> people know, like, you know, don't get the artist look twisted. I had a lot of fights growing up. So, um, grew up in Hidden Valley, and um, I went to NC State, and I finished up at UNC Charlotte with a degree in African Studies. Um, so, I've taught. I'm a mother of three. Um, I am an artist. I shot for Creative Law Firm for about six years as one of their lead photographers. Walked away about a year and a half ago. And I've just been kind of figuring out what direction I'd like to go as an artist photographer with that. Um, I got tired of doing editorial things, particularly under um, the navigation of Creative Law Firm. It's a whole other story. Um, I am also, to some people, a vegan chef. Um, I do vegan food coaching, so I don't claim myself as a vegan because I'm not really into titles under any circumstances. So, but I help people to eat cleaner. I do a party called Satisfy at my house um, where we eat, hang out, listen to music, watch movies, play taboo, <laughs> but mostly eat. Um, I also am the founder and um, I have a partner also, but I'm the founder of Sukasa. It was created in my house, and if you know if you were there in the beginning when it was at my house in the loft, and um, it got out of control, so we moved into Dharma, and we're celebrating our third anniversary on May 2nd. Um, and um, yeah, that's the highlight. So anyway, feel free to ask me questions, and then I'll just go from there. Who are you bringing up? This for this anniversary, we're bringing Daz IQ of Bugs yeah. in the Attic. So he's um, a pretty popular producer in London. He's from London. Um, he's worked with a lot of different people, Broken Me and House and Soul, um, a lot of artists in Atlanta, and a lot of artists all over the world. And um, I love him because he's he's like, uh, he started a party in London that was just, you know, he, he would always say to me, like, with Sukasa, because Sukasa's been. And for you guys who don't know what Sukasa is, it's a party, and so the commitment for Sukasa is about the music. It's about soulful house music. It's about black dance music that people dance to. And if you've ever been to other cities and you've been to other parties,
and you've ever seen um, those scenes. They're quite elaborate and thorough, but people in Charlotte don't tend to really grasp that. So, um, I mean, I'm like, my position in terms of being from Charlotte is that the things that I've always been interested in, it's, it's been a really slow, slow road for Charlotte to kind of catch on. So, Charlotte tends to be a place, or has been a place for me, where either you do some semi-performing, or, you know, it's not very profitable. So, Sukasa is about, it's about soulful house music, it's about Afrobeat, it's about hip life, it's about um, just any of those dances that you might happen to find on your YouTube that, you know, the little, like, Cuban or little Dominican children are doing to the music. It's about, like, deep drum groove music. And, and in there, there's Stevie Wonder and there's a sprinkle of, you know, just all of this stuff, but it's really about the beauty of music and just, you know, the drum is about Africa, like, at the end of the day. That's what Sukasa is. So, um, we've done a good job in terms of bringing people because they trust the brand, but in terms of Charlotte really having a house scene, like, people that do follow music know that, um, like, if you ever went to home, home was a house club, they closed. Dharma's closing next month. It doesn't do well. Really? You know, it just doesn't. You know, they bring a few big acts, and some people come. To be honest, it's usually the white house crowds that come. You know, people don't really know who DJ Spinner is here. They don't really know who DJ Kemet is. They don't really know who Casa, um, Casamina is. They don't, you know, they don't really know who it is. So, you know, you go to these other large cities, and they know, I mean, it's thousands of people just like housing and dancing. I mean, like, you know, at the heart, at my heart of hearts, like, that's my passion. I love hip hop. I love all these things, but I love to just dance and, and hear good things. So that's what Sukasa is about. And we'll, you know, we kind of transition to other things, but that's ultimately what it's about. So, y'all want to pass me your questions? Why'd you change your name? Why'd I change my name? <laughs> um, so, Jay Z Addict is like, it's so funny because it's long. I've been Jay Z Addict for about 20 years. So, I've been Jay Z Addict for about 20 years. I've had natural hair for at least 20 years. So, you know, like, I've, had, I've, been, I've been eating, you know, animals for about 20 years. So, like, all of these things I've been doing for, like, you know, almost as old as some of y'all are. So, <laughs> um, it's funny, though, because, like, as, as confident as I am and as long as I've been Jay Z at it, even to, like, most of my family, Sometimes people ask me what Jay-Z addict means, and I really just don't have the energy to talk about it, because, especially when white people ask me, I'm like, oh shit, so what does that mean? Where does that come from? So Jay-Z addict is um, a name, an attribute from the Nation of God's Nurse, which most people know as the 5% nation. I was reading an article this morning, or looking at something on Facebook about Jay-Z coming to a game with like the Star 7. So most people know what the Nation of God's Nurse is the Wu-Tang or Brand Nubians. If you're a child of hip hop, then you're familiar with the Nation of Gods and Earths. But for me, the Nation of Gods and Earths during that point was um, a way for me to identify um, and just really, it was kind of my entryway into understanding my spirituality. So um, I came from a family who was not traditionally Southern Baptist. So my family was very, um, my mother was very neutral. She was very God neutral. Occasionally she would say things about God, but she was not, she was, okay, so again, like being a Virgo, my brother's a Virgo, my mother's a Virgo. And so being raised in that type of household really meant that my mother had some strict boundaries, but she was also very free flowing. So if I said I wanted to go to church with, church with a friend, she'd be like, go ahead. But my mother never went to church. Like, I can't ever remember one time her going to church. So, I mean, I would feel left out when kids would be, like, quoting Bible verses and, you know, talking about, you know, and we did this in church, and I would be like, church? You know, what's that about? But, you know, of course, now I really appreciate it. So I came up in this very, like, religiously neutral household. And so I never felt the need to have religion to do good things. Like, I, I you know, so I really couldn't wrap my head around that. But, um, you know, it came a time where I was like, well, something's different. So Nation of Gods and Earths just pulled me in because they were saying, like, you know, the black man is God. And I was like, what the fuck does that mean? The black man is God? And they were saying the black man is God, the black woman is God. Like, 
you know, like this blackness and this connection to Africa and this, you know, this being of who we are is God, it's God enough. And I was like, well, that shit makes sense to me. You know, and I'm a very practical person. So then there was mathematics and, you know, there was all of these things. And it made sense to me, it, it made a lot of sense. And so what I found between that and now is that I'm not a, a big community dweller because when bullshit happens, I can't go for it. So if I see somebody doing something that's some complete bullshit and they're in the community and the community doesn't say to do that, then I have a real problem with it. So I'm like, well, what the fuck are you, you know, like, what are you doing? Like, that's, you're not supposed to be doing that. So, um, so I left the Nation of Gods and Earths, but it was always really practical for me. And the best thing the Nation of Gods and Earths did for me was that they had, you know, like you had to learn alone for your 120, I mean, that's what we you also had to learn food degrees. So when I came into being vegetarian, it was in a very informative kind of way. It wasn't like, all right, you know, you start and you don't eat this or you don't eat. It was very much like, you gotta read every single ingredient. So it was very good in terms of making me and allowing me to study and really understand the politics of what was going on in the food, with the food in the U.S. So um, anyway, Jay-Z means Mind and Body is my name that um, I came up with, along with actually A. King, whom I've known forever, all right? So A. King was like one of the first people I met in the Nation of God's Earth, and he wasn't like my teacher or my God, but he was just a friend, just a homie, and um, very early on I went to him and I was like, all right, so I mean, usually what happens is that women kind of come in and they're with a man, but that was never my style. So I was like, all right, so I'm coming into this, and this is what my name is going to be. And he was like, yeah, that's, you know, I like that. That's good. And, you know, so he was there kind of to watch the birth of that name. And I knew he, at the time he was Akin, and then he later became Akin. Anyway, that's where Daisy Adam comes from. So, I mean, since then I've been published under that name, and I've been that name, and so that's what my family and my children and everyone knows. Yeah, it's, it's Daisy Adam, so that's it. I keep. Um, What's your deepest, darkest fear? It depends on the day. I'm not one of those people that, um, you know, try to act like I don't have fears or I'm not upset or I'm not angry. You know, like, I, I mean, there's times where I fucking hate the world when I wake up. I don't want to talk to nobody. I don't want to see nobody. I hate everything. My brother is like one of my best friends, and um, you know, I'll call him about be like, you know, who do you hate, and he'll just start with and I'll like, this is who I hate, and we'll just kind of like have a little hate party, and that works for us, you know? That really, that's really fun for me, you know? Be like, I fucking hate everybody and everything. So it just depends, but I would say that um, my deepest, darkest, what's my deepest? Because <laughs> I don't really know. I mean, sometimes it's being hurt, it's being, you know, so, I mean, sometimes, like right now, um, so the, the latest fear right now is that um, I'm raising a teenager, and so, <laughs> right. And I think about you, I do, and I, I was like, you got it get out of here or get off the planet is that kind of scenario, is that serious, like, I can't see you at all. And um, so my fear in that is that my children are really, you know, they're different and um, they're bright and they've been, you know, I was sitting there like, what did I do wrong? I guess we do that, right? Like, what the fuck did I do wrong here? Because he is, um, I was like, I was supposed to know everything. He's I mean, he was hanging out with fucking James Spooner and, you know, at Afro Punk, at the birth of Afro Punk, you know, these men were calling me like, oh, we really love your kid. I mean, like, you know, I mean, like, I'm like, damn, he's been so exposed. You know, he travels, I buy him clothes, you know. You know what I mean? Like, I homeschool him up until a good amount. Like, he's been fed well. What the fuck is wrong with him? You know, so my fear last night was just like that he would be a complete failure. But the, the, honest, <laughs> the honest truth is that, I mean, to some degree, I really don't care. Because you came through, I'm doing my job, and so if you want to be a loser, then I have two other children. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> somebody going to buy me a house. Hell but, yeah. Here last night. So anyway, that's it. 
Okay. Um, somebody else asked me, what's your greatest fear if you have any? Okay, wait, here's another fear. I, um, I did some crazy shit on my part-time job that a pilot asked me to do on a plane. And I was like, damn, they don't hire me over this shit. <laughs> Um, that was ever written 
being who was um, disabled or, you know, there's different versions of it, but essentially um, they came through, they wiped out the whole village, they spared him because, you know, he was weak or he was disabled, and then he in turn became this great king, took all of his people back and completely, like, took the land back over and, you know, did what they do. And um, also, of course, there's a, you know, a great panther named Sanyata. I just really love that name. His middle name is Ayako, and his father had it while he was having a vision of something from the earth. Anyway, all right. So I don't know what the fuck that means. Okay. What's the most beautiful thing about motherhood? What change would you like to see in the city? Whoever wrote this is not a mother. Anyway, no, I'm just playing. Um, I think it's really beautiful when they're young and you're just like watching the changes and the growth. It's just really amazing. Like, you know, when they're young and they're, they're talking to you. And um, I, I mean, I have to be honest, I'm in a period right now where they're not that amazing, right? We're, I mean, 9, 10, 14. <laughs> 9, 10, 14, I mean, they're kind of regressing and um, not really amazing me that much. I mean. Roll the dice, pick the day. Yeah. I don't know, I mean, it's a rough, what'd you say? It'll, there'll, there'll be a moment, about 17. Yeah. But it'll be a moment. And then maybe it comes <laughs> back at like 23. Maybe. Yeah, it, there'll be a moment on Wednesday, and then um, yeah. Thursday, you're like, I'm going to show you until you pass out here. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then don't come in here, don't talk to me. Um, you think that's because of exposure to, like, mass society, or just, like, no, or just, like, that's what happened? I just think when you're 14, sometimes you're an asshole. You're sucked. <laughs> you're like, you just suck. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my 10 year old's goal every day is to just get everything she wants. And that's mostly, like, like <laughs> Every single day that is her goal, to get every single thing that she wants. And usually it's pho, the Vietnamese noodle bowl. Like she wants that every day. And like when that's not for dinner, she's like. <laughs> but some of y'all is kind of amazing sometimes. It's sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And they haven't been to the school this year that's really facilitated, like, sweet and amazing. Like, they haven't come home with any brilliant artwork. Like, I made this for you, mommy. <laughs> They've just been, like, at school. They've been at um, Student First Charters, school that just closed. We just found out last week they were closing this, this week. Mm. So, whatever. I mean, I feel really bad for the teachers. I have a home school in my name. So, um, what change would you like to see in the city? I'm gonna let somebody else answer that. I mean, I don't know what I'd like to see. I mean, it's. I don't know. I mean, I know it's a touchy subject, you know, but like for me, and just this is just having traveled a lot and just seeing the possibilities. Like, I know Charlotte's growing. I know people like to say it's growing. I mean, I know, but it's been growing since 1980s. Remember the 80s? No, y'all remember the 80s. Remember the 90s when it was like music and jazz at the parks yes. and shit? Remember that? Like, I mean, like big ass jazz concerts. You remember that? Yes. Like at Hawthorne Park and mm -hmm. stuff? Like so many damn black yeah. people. You thought you were in Atlanta for a minute. Right. I mean, do y'all remember that, right? right? Yep. There's like jazz music playing and stuff. And I mean, I'm not really like, I'm not a, I'm, I'm a classical jazz kind of girl, but I'm definitely not like a Kenny G jazz girl. But I mean, it's like, you know, right. it's like jazz, black people, chilling, hanging out. The radio. It's the radio. Well, so then that was like the early 90s. So like the progress from that, I mean, remember 2000 when like Rashad was doing the block parties and they were like lots of brown people and DJs and he brought Asher Real Blue Black and I mean if you know who that is or whatever and if you don't, whatever. But you know like, remember that and then like now, I don't know, like so to me it's like this kind of thing but I don't know, like 
a mural on the side of it. And Charlotte's like, oh, that's three murals, and you know who did it. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, I mean, I, I like to see more art. I like to see more brown people. You know, I'm just like, I just don't do well in, like, vanilla-ness, you know? And I'm just, it's, Charlotte is really bland because all black people live in university for the first few years. You know what I mean? Like, where you live in university? <laughs> it's like to the point now where, like, if I work with somebody, and they're like, yeah, yeah, university. Uh, maybe I should move to university. <laughs> Why do you believe in art, fashion, and culture in Charlotte? I don't believe in art, fashion, and culture. I just live that shit. Like, I was just having this conversation with Poop, and I was saying, like, a lot of things, like, being vegan, like, so long ago, like, there was, like, five people at two health food stores. And I was just like, if you're going to do it, you're just going to do it. No excuses. You just do it, and you just do it alone. You know what I mean? Like, you you just do whatever alone. And there are other people doing other things, but um, you know, like I, I just try to like live and do what I like. So I always say like I'm a hobbyist. You know, I just live my hobbies. I just try to. I like to eat. So guess what I do? I cook. All right. I like to hang out with people. So I have parties. I like to dance, so I invite the DJs. That's all, folks. <laughs> so um, I don't have any like goal to, to be like the savior or to create, you know, a scene or whatever. If they come, they come. If they don't, they don't. Who are your inspirations and what is love? Oh, my great questions. My inspiration. So I am inspired by my children. They're very. They're smart, right? They're witty. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They are, if, if nothing else, like they know things. And if nothing else, the teenager does, like he always knows like stuff. He, he knows a lot of stuff, right? Like I, I think he knows a lot of stuff. Like, I mean like, I'm impressed that y'all can talk about music and you can say, yo, you heard such and such and he's like, I mean he's of that real fast food generation. So he's always like, he's on it. You know what I mean? He's on it in different areas, and Nami Mon is definitely like very wise beyond, but when I'm just looking for stuff, like I'm always just looking for the brightest, most colorful, most popping it out thing that I can find. And I listen, to, I listen to a lot of music. I listen to a lot of what I would play at Sukasa. Like I'm, I'm, I'm into like Azanto music right now from Ghana, and um, I listen to a lot of, um, I'd say, I just, cultural dance music. So um, I'm inspired by patterns and and, um, and bright things. And I'm, I'm always, always inspired by indigenous culture and um, how people used to live or they couldn't live a certain way. Um, what is love? Shit. Well, <laughs> You know, um, <laughs> and love is a lot of things, you know what I mean? Like, people are so quick. I would always hear people say, like, oh, if this person does that to you, that's not love. And I'm like, you know, who are you to define? Like, love is, I mean, it's a lot. Sometimes it's in the form of passion. Sometimes it's in the form of, it's in the form of a lot of things. Well, I mean, everyone technically knows that love is the opposite of Right? So it's when you're, you're fully invested in something and you don't have fear associated with it. Um, but none of that stuff exists at all the same time. Like there, there's no element of perfection for that because there has to be balance. So there has to be like this extreme love and then there has to be this balance of this other kind of energy to kind of keep the energies to flow. That's what I believe. But and there's the verb of loving. And, Ultimately, like, love with a partner really means just, like, commitment to stay and to work through. Until there's some real other anti-love bullshit, and then you gotta go. <laughs> you know, so, um, I don't know what is love. Does somebody else want to answer that? Since I answered all these questions. Wait, mm -hmm. so people want to write questions. Y'all want to write a question or you just want to ask a question? What was you like in high school? What was I like in high school? Yeah. So in high school, I kind of like how I am now. I think people would 
say I'm pretty much the same. Um, in high school, I was always doing something a little bit different, but always pretty popular. So I was, I was pretty popular by default, but I wasn't like the street popular girl because I would never go for that much attention, right? Um, I was like, you know, like I was always listening to a little bit of rock, a little bit of punk, a little bit of something. Like I was different enough to be different, but also kind of down with the black people. So I was kind of like, uh, just kind of how I am now. I mean, really, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, cause like I, I love hardcore, I love punk music. You know, I love black punk music, but I love punk music and I love, I mean, and the reason I say that really is sincerely because there are groups that I really do love, but most of the groups that play like rock or experimental alternative, like my favorites of those groups are always the black people that do that shit because they just do it with some flair and style and shit. You know what I mean? So like, um, but I was always just just a little bit on something different, but also <laughs> um, Yeah, but I don't know, like I had a curve, but I always had a shortcut. And I could grow long on there. I could grow really long. But I was always like she's like, um, she's a basketball wife, like on a show and you know, and she, her hair, she keeps her hair very short. And we were just having that conversation about like how, you know, it's just a thing. It's, I mean, it's just, it's a thing when you kind of plug yourself into that normal, regular. And so even though she's a very pretty girl, she's like, you know, no, I'm not growing my hair out. I'm gonna rock it short because, like, I mean, if you've ever been a black woman with short hair, you know how differently black men respond to you than when you have long hair that's hanging down your back and you know, you know what I mean? When you got that kind of thing going on, it's a whole fucking different response than when you chop that shit off ball and they're like, oh, why you cut off all that pretty hair? Or whatever the psychology or the fucked upness is in their mind that, you know, keeps them thinking that you're not as beautiful. So I was always like, Psh, fuck you. Like, I'm gonna cut it off. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do really what I wanna do, even though, you know, it was still like suck at that time period. I mean, you know, so. Yeah. I have a question. Okay, go. If money was no object, where would you live? If money was no object, I really would hop around and talk about this. Like, we like to travel. And I was just saying to um, Coop that, I mean, like, I'm a citizen of the world. Like, I really, I mean, pretty much anywhere else I visit, I say I can live, but the grass is always greener. You know, it really is. And um, I was recently, I mean, some of you saw this, having a pretty, which isn't typically my style, but having a semi-heated debate on Facebook <laughs> with someone. That was more fun. Right. And so I was having a semi-heated debate with someone on Facebook. And um, it was because she posted a picture. And everybody has their own different opinions about stuff. And I understand that. But she posted a picture of um, someone, an African king in Africa. And they were like saying basically like, um, we won't tolerate um, your laws and your, uh, your policies on homosexuality and we won't take your aid. And so people that know me, no matter where they stand on that side of things, know that I'm very, 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 very passionate about human rights for every single person. I think it's absolutely insane because whatever fear you have wrapped up around your sexuality or conspiracies or, you know, everybody gonna turn gay or whatever your fucking fucked upness is that allows you to be afraid of it, you know, you're, cousin that was gay that, you know, might have happened to make a passage. Whatever your fucked up shit is, like, has nothing to do with murdering and putting people in jail because they choose to be gay. So that's my position. So she was kind of, like, making a statement of, like, well, like, my, my official Pan-African stance is that America, y'all need to stay out of people's business, and Europe, y'all need to stay out of America. And I was just like, but... Europe and America have been in Africa 
for how many years now? Trace it back to that boat you got on. You think the motherfuckers left when they left Africa with your ass? No, guess what they did? They stayed there and they carved it up. They gave you a religion. They told you what you were going to believe, how you were going to think, what you were going to do it, um, and how you were going to follow their patriarchal order of the day. And I was just like, you know, we really can't be this naive, and we also can't, you know, have this level of lack, of, you know, this lack of compassion. And so, anyway, my point was, she was like, pro after, pro after, pro after, and I was like, yeah, I like Africa too, like real tough. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, when you go over to Accra and that fucking loose ass tank top hanging off your shoulder, looking all cute, and those Muslim men put your ass in check. Then you will have a reality. Cause sometimes we'll be like, oh, the grass is so green. You know what I mean? Like, I just want to live on the earth in Africa with bare feet and kick up red dust. And it's like, yeah, but you gotta take a cold shower. And I know that I can like, I can get like that for a month or two or three or four, and then I want a hot shower. I just do. Sue me. You know what I'm saying? Like, shit. Different parts of the world have different customs, and I mean, to be in a different space and to challenge that notion of growth in yourself is really good, but at the end of the day, where would I live? I live in Brooklyn if it was in the South. That's where I live. I love a really grand, huge support. 
surprise birthday party. <laughs> hint, hint, fucking hint. Um, go ahead. You had a question. Yes. What era would you like to live in? You can choose. Ooh, what era would I like to live in? Decade. Hmm. Okay. I'm like in this Erica Badu video now. So she said that like, the river and shit with gold dust and titties out. I mean, because like, really? Like, I would like to live during that time. But, I don't know. So one thing about me, really, is that, like, and Carl knows this because we have, like, we've talked about this, but I'm a really kind of in-the-moment person. Like, I'm not usually, like, even though I, I know the concept of the grass is greener, I'm just like, I kind of deal with whatever I'm dealt. So right now, I'm like, oh, I'm in this era. I guess when I die, I'll go to another era and I'll decide where I want to go at some point. But then I won't remember where I decided to go, probably, unless I'm a very evolved person. That's my beliefs. But, um, I, so I don't really have an era that I fantasize about, I don't think. I, I mean, I really have to think. I think, like, I'm, I'm good here. You know what I mean? Like, I think I'd make the best of it. Like, people are always like, I couldn't live as a slave. And I'm like, no, I probably <laughs> Y'all out of here. 